right now, many people are going through a lot, especially in this time when uh, so much is happening in the world. And I'm sure you have some relatives or friends or uh, close people who you've had them probably even going to a point of wanting to suicide themselves. And, uh, and you're worried and you're asking now, what happened and is this person now, has that person gone straight to hell? Maybe they were Christians, maybe they were not. What's, what's, what's exactly their fate? And I want to answer this question, not because I want anyone to suicide himself or things like that, but I want to answer the question, if a Christian commits suicide, is he still or is she still saved? This is what I'm going to address. Now, I know it's a very sad fact that uh, some Christians have uh, committed suicide sometime. We have heard of stories around the world where people have decided to take away their lives. And they are Christians. Yeah, yeah, they are Christians, some of them. And adding to the tragedy is the false teaching that committing suicide automatically consigns one to hell. Because, you see, there's a verse in the commandments of Moses which says, Do not kill, and killing is a sin. Now, I know that verse definitely means that. And, uh, of course, definitely it, there is no other thing which it means. But uh, if this person was a saved person, are, still, are they still condemned? Because the Bible says there is now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus. There is no bigger sin and a smaller sin. There is now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus. All right? Now, many believe that a Christian who commits suicide will not be saved. And this teaching is not supported in the Bible. Why? Because scripture tells us very well and very clearly, all right, from the moment we truly believe in Jesus Christ, we are guaranteed eternal life. John 3, 16, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish but will have everlasting life. Whosoever believes will not perish. If that person was a believer, then the Bible is, is very true on his words. It doesn't say one thing and mean another. So that person is still saved, all right? Because according to the Bible, Christians can know beyond any doubt that they possess eternal life. The Bible is written for us so that we can know that we have eternal life. Let me show you. In 1 John 5.13, the Bible is written for us so that we can know, so that we cannot gamble with our lives and, and think, do I have eternal life? Don't I have eternal life? John, 1 John 5.13 says, These things I've written unto you that believe on the name of the Son of God, that you may know that you have eternal life and that you may believe on the name of the Son of God. Are you seeing this? So you can know that you have eternal life. This video is not about to tell people to go and kill themselves. No. It's about to give you comfort. Probably there's a friend, a relative, someone close who was saved and things really got so thick and they suicided themselves and they killed themselves and, and it hurts you even to date and you're asking yourself, now those people... Did they go to hell? Yes, they were Christians. Did they go to hell? What really happened? The Bible says if they were truly saved, they didn't. Because nothing can separate a Christian from the love of Christ. Nothing. Nothing. Romans 8 verse uh, 38. Alright, I'll read to 39. Look at this. The Bible tells us there is nothing, absolutely, purely, nothing which can separate us from the love of Christ. Not even suicide, not even bad things, not even bad thoughts, not even just specifically anything that you think out there which really traumatizes you. Nothing can separate you. 
Look at this verse, Romans 8, 38. For I am persuaded that neither death, you see, suicide is what? Death. Nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come. No height, no depth, no any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Are you seeing? So no created thing can separate a Christian from God's love. God's love. And even a Christian who commits suicide, he is a created thing. So no created thing, okay? No created things. Nothing. Not even death itself can separate you once you're in Christ Jesus. All right? So Jesus died for all our sins. And, and if a true Christian in time of spiritual attack and weakness commits suicide, his sin is still covered by the blood of Christ. Are you, are you seeing this one? If a true Christian, sometimes Satan can, can, can attack a Christian, some spiritual attack, and you find something happened and, and somebody did something wrong but that person is still covered by the blood of christ are you seeing that because according to the bible suicide is not what determines whether a person gains entrance into heaven or not if unsaved person commits suicide he has done nothing but to expedite his journey to hell if he's an unsaved person, you see Satan right now, he wants so many people dead as quickly as possible so that they can go to hell because the world right now, so many people, they are not saved. And if Satan wants someone to die, he wants him to die before he comes to the knowledge of the truth. And if he's a Christian, someone who is saved, Satan wants that saved person to die so that they cannot preach the gospel to other people. If I'm not alive right now, you will not have heard this message. So that's why Satan wants Christians dead so that they cannot preach. Not so that they can go to hell, so that they cannot preach. So he may give them some spiritual attacks and things so that they can find themselves ending their lives. And they don't continue preaching. And remember, suicide is still bad because it will make you not gain the rewards that you could have gained in heaven. Because, number one, if you're not there... Who is going to preach? And if you're not preaching, then your rewards are not accumulating in heaven. If you're not there also, you've left a bad testimony. If you suicide yourself, you've left a bad testimony. So you've lost some rewards in heaven. Are you seeing the point? All right. So, the person who commits suicide will ultimately... If he's not saved, be in hell for rejecting salvation through Christ. Not because he committed suicide, but because he rejected the love of Christ. You see, the Bible tells us, whoever... Let, let me just show you. John. Uh, John 3, verse 18. The Bible tells us, anyone who rejects Christ is already condemned. Okay? He that believeth on him is not condemned. If you believe in Jesus, you're not condemned, no matter what you've done. But he that believeth not is condemned already because he has not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. You see? So if you don't believe in him, you're already condemned. You're already condemned. So if you die, you suicide yourself and you're not a believer, then you're condemned already. Are you seeing this? So we should also point out, however, that no one truly knows what is happening in a person's heart at the moment he or she died. Nobody knows what really happened in their heart. Have you seen this one? Some people at their deathbeds, they, they had conversations with themselves. And they, they accepted Christ. You never know. At the moment, just before they died, who knows what they said in their deathbed? You're not God to know. You don't know what they communicated with God. You see, many people are atheists. They, others, they pretend God does not exist. Others, they believe in other things. But you hear somebody at his deathbed. He said that Jesus is God. And, and maybe they had an encounter with Christ in some way. Do you remember Kaduri's prophecy? Whereby he said, uh, he's written a note. This Kaduri is a... Is a, is a 
is a rabbi from Israel, a very famous rabbi who died, I think, two or three or somewhere there, or two or seven, I don't know. He was a stunned Kabbalist. He never believed in Jesus. He never knew Jesus as anyone. He just like, no, Jesus cannot be the one. But in his deathbed, he said he has written a note. He met, he said that he met the Messiah. And on his deathbed, he wrote a note and he said it will be open a year after his death. And a, a year after he died, it was written that the Messiah is Yeshua, Jesus Christ. How could he have changed his mind all of a sudden after almost 100 years of teaching Kabbalah because he was really an old guy, talking and living all his life against Christ? How comes in that day he's decided that all of a sudden Jesus is the Messiah, Jesus is God? You see, people have different encounters at the last times. So we may not, it may not be up to us to judge what really this person he went to hell or he didn't go. The Bible tells us, Paul told us, it is not our duty to say this person went to hell and this one went to heaven. It is our duty to pray for them and to try to preach to as many people as possible so that they can come to the knowledge of the truth. All right? It is possible that a person who commits suicide could have a last second change of heart and cry out to God for mercy. We have such judgments to God we, we, we leave such kind of judgments to God. As the Bible tells us in, in uh, 1 Samuel First Samuel 16, verse uh, 7, the Bible tells us some judgments, they are not for us. Look, but the Lord said unto Samuel, Look not on this countenance or on the height of his statue, because I have refused him. For the Lord sees not as man sees. For man looketh on the outward appearance, but the Lord looks at the heart as we may look at this person he was a murderer he was a bad person he was this and this but do you know what he communicated with god do you know what he said with god but of course the bible says you shall know them by their fruits you can know and tell this person is 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 not a believer but i'm talking on the aspect of death do you know because death is not just a, any other ordinary thing death is very scary to, to some people is really scary not even to some people to everyone death is really scary and uh, we should know that uh, some people are scared when they face death and think about people like steve jobs think about great men of the earth who knew that i'm about to go and die you may you may wonder, but you may find some really crazy people who you thought they were crazy and they were, they were evil in heaven. And you'll be like, how did this guy get here? You never know what they talked with God. You never know. But I have to tell you that uh, the suicide of a believer is evidence that anyone can struggle with despair. And that our enemy, Satan, who was a murderer from the beginning. Remember what the Bible told us in John 8, verse 44. John 8, verse 44. What did the Bible tell us about Satan? You have your father the devil, and the last of your father you will do. He was a murderer from the beginning. And abode not in the truth, because there is no truth in him. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own, for he is a liar and the father of it. So Satan was the murderer from the beginning. So sometimes Satan may push thoughts and may push things so that he can cut short your life. And whichever Christian who has committed um, uh, uh, this suicide, one thing that you have to ask yourself and tell yourself is that, uh, yes, they have done it, but don't worry about them. What has happened has happened. Think about your own life and ask yourself, am I going to give my own life? Am I going to lose my rewards? Am I going to lose my testimony? Am I going to cut short myself? Because that's not the will of God. Because suicide is still a sin. Remember, it's still a sin. According to God, it's still a sin. I'm not ruling it out. It's still a sin. And according to the Bible, suicide is murder. And it is always wrong. And the Christians, all right, Christians, 
uh, they are called to live their lives for God. And the decision of when to die is God's. Is God's alone. All right. Only God is supposed to tell you when you should die. And I pray that anyone, maybe you're watching this video because there's, there's a certain thought like that or something. If you're considering or thinking about this, I pray that may God grant grace to you. Like David said in Psalms 43 verse 5. Psalms uh, 43 verse 5. All right. Why are thou cast down, O my soul? Remember what David said. My soul, why are you cast down? And why are you disquieted with me? Hope in God. For I shall yet praise him who is the health of my countenance, my God. Tell your soul, don't feel this way. Put your trust in God. Because in God, there's always truth. And uh, something else also that I would like to encourage you. I know this is something that uh, people find themselves in this situation and they don't know who to talk to. I think you should find someone who is reliable, someone that you can talk to. and Or maybe, I won't tell you, uh, I, I don't know, I don't know. In different countries, it depends. Like in Africa, even if you tell the police, they'll just laugh at you and tell you, you know, stop joking. But maybe in Europe or other places, the police might try to help you. But always find someone, maybe someone in church or someone close or a relative, family member, and talk to them. And at least share out because a problem shared is a problem solved. But all in all, put your trust in Christ. Put your trust in Christ. And if you're still there, and maybe things are, have really gone rough on you, and you don't know what to do, and you're, you're considering this and considering that, ask yourself, do I have the master of hope? Do I have Jesus in me? Because unless you have Christ in you, Christ gives us comfort. The reason why you see many people, many people who are believers, they have hope. Even in times of despair, a time like this, when all things are gone, we are losing jobs, we are losing that, we are losing that. But you see Christians, they still have hope. is because of one man, Jesus Christ, who died for our sins. Christ died for our sins. He did it for us. All right? He did it for us. So that we can have life and have it, have it abundantly. Jesus died for your sins. He was buried and rose again, as is written in the scripture. 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4. All you need to do is believe. Believe, understand that it was you who was supposed to be on that cross. But Jesus laid his life for you. So that if you believe in him, you'll not perish, but you'll have everlasting life. Whether whatever happened, whether they kill you, whether they inject things in you, whether they want to do whatever terrible thing in you, and you're scared, whether they take you out of job, you know, and you tell yourself that to live is Christ and to die is gain. Don't worry. I'm not telling people to go and kill themselves, but I'm telling them that put your trust in Christ Jesus who did this for you. He died a painful death so that you can have life. All you need to do is understand this fact and confess it to him and tell him, Jesus, I now understand that you died for my sins. You are buried and rose again as is written in the scriptures. I believe in you and I receive this payment, this atonement by faith. Be my Lord and Savior. And for sure, you are saved, sealed and sanctified unto the day of redemption. Hope this has been a blessing to you. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like and also you can share to your friends. Maybe someone you know or just general friends you can share to them. Let them hear the gospel. Let them know that there is hope in Christ. You can also subscribe and check on the description below. We have other channels outside YouTube. Where also you can share to people on BitChute on Facebook. Let people hear the gospel. God bless you and have a great time.